This video will cover how to solve an equation in quadratic form. You should already be familiar with the idea that a quadratic equation is anything of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. The important thing on something being considered quadratic is it's x squared. Any other kind of power, it's not considered a quadratic. However, there are certain polynomials that can be considered in what's called quadratic form and it must be this situation. The leading exponent is exactly twice the exponent on the middle term, which does fit our regular quadratic. This exponent is 2, this exponent would be 1, so 2 is twice 1. But this whole definition will cover other powers like x to the fourth with an x squared in the middle, or x to the two-thirds with an x to the one-third in the middle. So two ways to think about this. One is either that you look at the lead power and that lead power must be exactly twice the middle power, or the other way around, the middle power must be half the lead power. So take a look at these examples and see that these truly do fit this definition. We have this x is the same as x to the first, then x to the one half in the middle, one half is half of one, or the other way around, you've got that the one is twice the one half. x to the two thirds, with an x to the one-third in the middle. Well, one-third is half of two-thirds, or two-thirds is twice one-third. Four-fifths compared to two-fifths. Four-fifths is twice two-fifths, or two-fifths is half of four-fifths. I haven't shown you how to solve these yet. I just want you to be able to recognize that these do fit this quadratic form. Once you recognize that they fit the quadratic form, that's going to give you the strategy for solving. Here's another one, x to the fourth with an x squared in the middle. This 2 in the middle is exactly half of the 4. Even this one with the parentheses, because this is some quantity squared, and it's the same quantity raised to the first power, since there's no exponent there, this will fit the quadratic form also. So once we recognize that these are quadratic form, we are going to solve it like we did the quadratics with factoring. All we have to do is come up with what's going to go in the parentheses. Let's take a look at one in its entirety to show you how we're going to work this whole thing. First off, you need to recognize that this does fit the quadratic form because you have a power of x to the first to begin with, and that one that's right here is exactly twice this half right here. This is going to let us go to our parentheses for factoring. The only thing different in the beginning is that you are so used to just automatically putting x and x in the front. Well, it's not going to be x and x in the front because x times x would have given us x squared. We have to come up with the correct power that will multiply and give us x to the first. Well, you don't have to do a lot of thinking about this. Automatically, whatever your power is right here on the middle term, that's going to be the power that's going to go on both of these x's. And then it's your same sign rules and arithmetic rules from plain old factoring. The last sign is positive and the middle sign is negative. That tells me that both of these are negative. And then it's simply what multiplies to give me 2, that adds to give me 3. That's going to be 2 and 1. And that's the factoring that I show right here. Once you have it written as something times something equals 0, you can use your zero products property, which just sets each of those equal to 0 and you solve. Now there's Two things you can think about here. I prefer to switch this rational exponent back to its radical form. I just think most students think a little better in the radical form. So x to the 1 half converts to the square root of x. Still the minus 2 equals 0. Same idea over here. I need to get this radical isolated, so I add 2 to both sides, which now gives me the square root of x equals 2. To do this square root, I need to do the opposite of square root, which is squaring both sides. So when I square both sides, I'm going to get x equals 4. Same set of steps over here on this one. I changed the rational exponent to a radical. Then I added 1 to both sides, which gives me the square root of x equals 1. Undo the square root by squaring both sides, and we're going to get x equals 1. So we have two solutions here. But as in any kind of equation, we need to be careful and we need to check. So we're going to plug 4 back in here and see what happens. Put 4 in for x gives us 4. Minus 3 times 4 to the 1 half plus 2. Now depending on your calculator, you could type this into your calculator just about the way you see it. Or you could think about this 4 to the 1 half really stands for the square root of 4. So this is 4 minus 3 times 2 because the square root of 4 is 2 
plus 2, which is 4 minus 6 plus 2, does give me 0. That one checks. Do the same with 1. This is 1 minus 3 times 1 to the 1 half plus 2. It's a 1. 1 to the 1 half is the square root of 1, so square root of 1 is 1, so this is just 3 times 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Check that out. That does give us 0, so both of these are solutions for us. You might not have to do that by hand check, depending on what your calculator will do. Let's take a look at another one. Now we've got x to the 2 thirds minus 5x to the 1 third. We're going to go to our parentheses because it does fit our quadratic form. This is automatically going to be x to the 1 third, x to the 1 third right here, because whatever the middle power is, is going to come over and be the front of the parentheses. This has got a minus at the end, so one of these is positive and one of these is negative. And now I say to myself, what multiplies to give me 6, that subtracts to give me 5. Subtract because of these opposite signs. And it will need to be minus 6 and a positive 1. Because in this scenario, because it's different signs, your bigger factor goes with the middle sign. Since that's negative, my bigger number went with the negative. So there's my factoring. Zero products property, set both of those up equal to zero, which is what I have right here. And solve. I did the same thing. I went back to the radical form. x to the one-third stands for the cube root of x. Then I'm going to add 6 to both sides. To undo cube root, we need to do the opposite, which is cube both sides. The cube root of x cubed just gives me x, which is what I want. 6 cubed, you can type that into your calculator or type in 6 times 6 times 6, which is 216. Same manipulating over here. I changed the rational exponent to the radical, subtracted 1 from both sides, and now I've got the cube root of x to solve by doing the opposite, which is cube both sides. Cube root of x cubed is x. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So there's two solutions, and I would need to check both of those. I'm not going to write out the check on this one. You could stop the video and type it into your calculator if you needed to, but they both work. This is 216 to the 2 thirds minus 5 times 216 to the 1 third minus 6. Remember what I showed you on another video. You could always do 216 and then stow it as x and then you could type in exactly what you see here. Be careful with this x to the 2 thirds. When you type that into the calculator, you need to do x. Probably your calculator is a caret there. Could be a y to the x button but you need to put the 2 divided by 3 in parentheses. If you don't put that in parentheses, the calculator is reading that as x squared, and then divide that quantity by 3. All right, here's another one with a half and a 1 right here. So I'm going to have x to the 1 half in the front of each one. It's a negative right here. That's why my signs are different, and it does factor as plus 2 and the minus 1. Set them each equal to 0. I changed it back to the radical form. Working on the 1 on the left, subtract 2 from both sides, and now I have the square root of x equals negative 2. So to undo the square root, I'm going to square both sides, which gives me x equals 4. The same scenario over here, add 1 to both sides, gives me the square root of x equals 1. Square both sides, and I get x equals 1. This one I do want to check because there's something that's going to happen here. So let's put a 4 in here. 4 plus 4 to the 1 half, that's the same thing as the square root of 4, minus 2 equals 0. Well, 4 plus 2 minus 2 does not equal 0. That says this 4 that we thought worked does not work. It gets thrown out. The 1 does work. You can check that out on your own. Now go back to this problem right here where we had square root of x equals negative 2. If you're paying attention on that step, you would notice that the square root equal to a negative is not possible. So we really didn't have to do the squaring of both sides. We could have stopped right there and said, nope, that can't work. So when you have these where you have square root equal to a negative, you toss that out right there.